Do you struggle with self-doubt, shame, or past traumatic experiences? In this video, well-known author and speaker Brene Brown shares her expert insight on how to overcome these challenges and start living a more fulfilling life. What do you say to the people you meet who are on the third marriage, their kids don't talk to them, and there are certain things that they have convinced themselves subconsciously or otherwise, maybe through an abusive upbringing or trauma, whatever it might be, that it is unsafe to feel certain things. And you come in, they've asked for help, but they do not want to open Pandora's box, right? They do not want someone to drag them into the deep waters of emotions that they've kept under lock and key for so long. How do you help someone like that? What do you suggest to them? Because it does get messy, right? It's going to get messy before it gets clean. So for someone who's listening to this and says, you know what, I buy it, like I get it. And yet, what do I do? Because I've been, I've had on this armor for so long. So I would say a couple of things. I mean, the first thing I always feel like is really important to say is that I'm a researcher and so I'm not a therapist. That would be differentiate me with Esther. Like I don't see clients. If I go in and I'm working with CEOs and this question comes up all the time, what I would say to people is Pandora's box is closed right now, but are you under the impression that you're living outside of the box or in the box? Like, like, yeah, I like that. You know I mean? Like you don't want to open Pandora's box because that's strange to me because you're living inside Pandora's box. And what I feel like you've asked me to come here to open it up. Like we're not going to do this process without walking through some deep shit where there's going to be deep, swift water. And if the water is super deep and swift, you need to go through that with a therapist and get that, that, that settled before we work in the organizational way. But what I would say to people, what I always say is, is the same for me. And I'm sure the same for you that we all grew up and experienced at very de varying degrees, trauma, disappointment, how, you know, hard stuff we armored up and at some point that armor no longer serves us and so what i think i would say to that person is how is not talking about this serving you mm -hmm. like i've been sober for 23 years so someone in aa would be like how's that shit working for you mm -hmm. you know like but i probably would put a softer spin on it than that right. um <laughs> over black coffee and a cigarette but you know but i would say that it's not serving anymore mm -hmm. and now the weight of the armor is too heavy and it's not protecting you it's keeping you from being seen and known by others mm -hmm. and so this is i mean just tell you quintessentially this is the developmental milestone of midlife from late 30s to you know through probably your 60s, this is the question. Hmm. You know, this is when the universe comes down and puts her hands on your shoulders and pulls you close and whispers in your ear, I'm not fucking around. You're halfway to dead. Hmm. The armor is keeping you from growing into the gifts I've given you. That is not without penalty. Time is up. Hmm. So this is what you see happen to people in midlife. And it's not a crisis. It's a slow, brutal unraveling. And this is where everything that we thought protected us keeps us from being the partners, the parents, the professionals, the people that we want to be. And there are only, I've only seen, this is a fork in the road. I've only seen two responses to this visit from the universe. Well, there's, a, I guess there's, there was my response, which I, I was like, screw you, bring it. Like you think you, you can, you, you think you can best me? And then it was just one nightmare situation after another until, you know, you're not going to win that fight. Right. I think if you say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Then you've got to double down. These are the people that walk through the world, double down on their own shit, in denial, you know, cheek squeezed as they walk and cause so much pain in the world. Yeah to themselves as well. I mean, right? yes, because it is so much easier to offload pain than yeah. to feel pain. Yeah. And so you really have a choice in midlife, whether you're going to be, you're going to, you know, 
identify you know, the first step of it, the whole process is what armor. And I'm not saying like, I'm not saying just pull off all the armor and streak through Austin because I think you can't replace the armor with something. Hmm. I think it's curiosity is what you replace it. You just become very curious about yourself, about the world. Why did I react that way? When Tim asked me that question, I wanted to like hit him over the head with a Topo Chica <laughs> bottle. You know, what was going on there? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what is my obsession about this? You just become very curious is curiosity is really the superpower hmm. um, for the second half of our lives. Because it keeps us learning, it keeps us asking questions, and it increases our self-awareness. But when you see, and I think it's really hard, because you know, I'll walk into a situation and there'll be the person who invited me is usually the CEO. And then you'll have like the cross-armed, pissed off, clenched cheek, like F you looking person, <laughs> usually in operations or technology, you know, and then they're like, What's the business case for you being here? Yeah, right. Like, because you know. Here's our stock price. Here's what's going on. Here's our valuation. Like, why? Are, what, what? What do you need? And then you know the CEO usually say, we "Fucking hate each other," and this can only last for so long. Like, you know, it's the end of every great band, right? Like, yeah. this is going to come to an end, and it's going to be terrible. And so, I don't know. I think you can't pull it all off at once. You have to. There's for a lot of people. For all of us, there's trauma. Yeah. Um, and people are like, no, there's not trauma for all of us. There's trauma for, you know, people who had, have been abused physically, sexually, you know, emotionally. There's trauma for people of color and people who have been on the margins. There's trauma for all of us. It's just different levels of trauma. Yeah. You know, I mean, to ex escape childhood with nothing is, I haven't met that person yet. No, I haven't either. Right. So the trauma stuff literally the trauma message in our body is you take this armor off we die so you protect us at all cost and leave this on a lot of that work has to be done with a therapist yeah yeah there's uh there's some really good books i mean there are a lot of terrible books on this type of there topic are. but the the i think it's the body knows the score or the body keeps the score about Bessel van der Kolk. yeah yeah Bessel van der Kolk is is very interesting in terms of tying the the, the physiology and somatic experience into these totally. past emotional experiences and you know what you were saying about pandora's box and the question which i liked of uh do you think you're living outside of Pandora's box or living outside of Pandora's box or are you just locked inside Pandora's box uh, is, is a really insightful question. And also reminds me of a conversation I had with uh, a friend of mine who's had a very, who had a very, very tough time, multiple divorces, uh, fortunately on good terms with his kids, but a lot of interpersonal strife and, he said what no doubt you've heard a lot, which is like, yeah, I'm just not sure I want to go there. I'm not sure I'm ready to sort of open that. I'm not sure I'm ready to deal with it. And what, what occurred to me as I was listening, because I experienced this for a long time is, oh, you're dealing with it. <laughs> that, you, I was going to say, I, yeah, I, yeah whether, you're dealing with yeah, it. Your yeah. choice is, do you want to deal with it head on in the sunlight or do you want to have, have it come oozing out of the corners in the darkness where you can't contend with it in a direct or systematic way. So you're dealing with it no matter what. The question is, how are you dealing with it? And oh, great Jungian saying, keep your shadows in front of you. They can only take you down from behind. Oh, I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, you're dealing with it. Like, like, here's the thing, emotion and cognition, undefined and unexplored drive every decision you make. Mm -hmm. I mean, you either develop self-awareness or these things control you. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, but it's really, I have to say that it can, as someone who chooses affect or affect words carefully, it can be terrifying for people. Yeah. But rarely does anyone around them who knows them, like you with your friend, say, Oh my God, I'm shocked to hear this when the reveal comes out. Yeah. You're like, your whole life has been defined by this. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on this life-changing journey with Brene Brown. If you found these insights valuable, don't forget to like, subscribe, 
and click the notification bell so you never miss out on another opportunity to improve your life. Let's go on this journey together.